uh, yeah, I'll record all of those things. Um, but yeah, so we need to sort of, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of a fast version of this during which I won't really accept questions. And then I will just blitz through and show you the basics of how to, how to do that, right? Um, so basically we need to reroute all of these polygons at like a much lower density, right? Like we're talking like less than half. We're talking like a, a quarter maybe, uh, especially because I'm going into uh, a game engine. Um, and <laughs> Sophia has a question. Uh, so this is going into a game engine. And there we have like really strict polygon budgets, you know? Um, it's less strict for triple A characters because uh, they have things that are very optimized um, and they have a different style. They have like photorealism quite frequently. So they need to have high polygon budgets for their characters. They're usually in like 1 million polys per character these days. That's not like unheard of. Uh, probably even upwards of that um, for next gen stuff. But we need to get this reduced, right? And I'll show you guys the slow way, the proper way in Maya. So usually we use Maya for this. And let me start exporting everything, right? So I'm gonna go sub tool by sub tool and export it. So I'm selecting my rat, I'm gonna export I'm going to do, uh, let's, let's make this a new folder just so they're all separated. I'm going to do rat sculpt high. Boom. And I'm going to do rat body. That's just exporting OBJ. I'm going to go on to down my list. Um, also a neat trick that we can do before we do this, because this is going to be a pretty intensive operation is that we can one second, hide the zooms overlay so I can touch these buttons. Uh, you can go up to your Z plugin master. Let me save before I do this because I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to mess around with stuff because this is, we're going to do something that's a little bit destructive to the file. Like it will, it will lose information. So let me get this set up. And while we have time while it's saving, um, Sophia asks, how was your day? And my day was my day was pretty good. Pretty good so far. Pretty good. <laughs> mm, my God. There we go. All right. So, because uh, this is going to like, this mouse alone is 200,000 polys. So that's gonna run slowly in Maya. Uh, you can use Z plugin and we're looking for decimation master and I'm gonna do pre-process all and it's gonna think. So it's going through every single sub tool. It's like scanning it in ZBrush language in ZBrush's mind. All right, so those got, those got scanned now. Oh, computing, please wait. Don't worry, ZBrush will always wait for you. Um, and basically what we're, what it's going to do is it's going to scan this down into, uh, triangles and really reduce the poly count of it. So if I go to decimate all, it's going to decimate all visible sub tools, boom, down to 20%. See how it says percent of decimation right there. There we go. It is switching through all of them. You can see that it's scanning up here. Boom. All right. So now let's turn off. You can see now how it scanned it. See all these like jagged polys in there. Uh, and we can turn off our poly frame. And now look what we got though. 300,000 instead of 1.5 million. 300,000. Like that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and export a merged version of this rat. Uh, so for when we're retopologizing stuff like this, sometimes we would keep the shirt that we would export the, all the shirt pieces as a separate piece. 
Um, you can get really clean bakes if you export every single sub tool as a different sub tool though. So I'm probably gonna do, I'll, I'll, I'll do the, the proper way and export every sub tool separately. Uh, so I'll do first this rat export and then rat body. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make sure that I'm noting that these are decimated. Do export. And I'm going to do the pants, pants decimated, just so we differentiate. And these are, what is this, boots, export, boots decimated. This is going to be kind of laborious for sure. Uh, boots cuff decimated. Uh, oops. Why is this? Why is that not? One second. Export. Boots. Cuff. Decimated. All right. It's weird. Um, what is this? Oh, it's the soles. Export souls decimated. So keep in mind, this is the this is the slow version, but this is the industry correct version. We're gonna have complete control over where our points are going on this model. Um, export uh, shirt cuff. Decimated. And then I can merge these two down. I'll merge these two little, uh, these two little cloth things down here. So I can just go that in my list here, merge down. And I'll select the top one, so it's going to merge down to that bottom one. Boom. Uh, export uh, shirt. What is that? Drawstring lace? I don't know. Shirt lace. Decimated. Mm -hmm. And this is tail. Uh, export. Tail. Decimated. A lot of grunt work with this. That's fine. Export. Buckle. Decimated. And I think that's everything. Let me get all these optional ones from our past demonstrations out. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my file is a little bit unclean from, uh, from past examples. So to get to the decimation, you just did Z plugin decimation. Mm -hmm. Decimation master, yeah, that's the one. Gotcha, and then you didn't change anything really, you just kind of did it? I just did pre-process all and then mm -hmm. decimate all. Perfect, thank you. No problem. Um, select this. There we go. This should be a belt somewhere as well. There we go, belt. Nice. All right, export. Built, decimated. Oops, not that way. So what is this? This might be an optional one. Turn that off. Yeah, that's an optional one as well. And then the eyeballs. Export eyeball. We'll we'll find out if uh, we forgot to export anything. Decimated. Eyeballs decimated. 
we could alternatively merge all that together and export it as one and then uh, open up import that into Maya but then it kind of it kind of gets still slow when you're selecting those pieces um, but yeah decimation master sounds really metal it definitely is just goes through all those polys doesn't give a foot just reduces them to triangles so metal I swear I swear guys So now I'm popping up open uh, good old Maya. I'm also going to close. This is one of the more intensive operations that we're going to do. Uh, if you're retopologizing in Maya. So I'm making sure I'm giving everything I can to Maya to use. <laughs> All right. I think Maya's going to still chug for a little bit while it's thinking of everything. Yeah, it's definitely going to. You can tell by like when you move your cursor over these icons that they aren't highlighting. That way, you know, Maya's not actually thinking. It's just like loading plugins and stuff. Is there a way to reset the camera in brush in ZBrush? Oh, Keely knows this one. Mm. Keely, send us your knowledge. Show, yep, there you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Josh, uh, Josh might have uh, snuck in there with some info, but, uh, but yeah, let's. Um, if you look on Beachboard, there's some uh, there's some little guides. Uh, there's like a little little bit of like uh, topology guides. Uh, just there's more than me. yeah, and you'll see that this is basically what we're talking about. Though you see each of these different bands that they 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 kind of outline the shapes right, and these are purposely arranged right they weren't they weren't just haphazardly it's because like one a lot of muscle groups follow this sort of shape and so it just makes sense that those are the forms that we're kind of outlining right um they don't have all of them right because there's like some muscles that stretch like kind of lateral to the face how you get these sort of creases in there but like these are also like these these subsequent rings are going to deform a lot nicer if you end up animating it now face animations outside of the scope of the class right because you need a face rig in there you have to push all those points around but just so you know the sort of the the, the premise of where you lay these these loops like you get you get that like these, this is a main form right like the that that eyebrow so you have to have that kind of separated off into its own loop these eyes blink all the time at that that separated into a loop as well the mouth expands contracts opens up closes got to have that in a, a loop as well um the same thing for the arm right like if you if you have that arm going out there you're gonna have a loop around that arm you're gonna have a loop at the wrist you're not gonna have random topology that flows across it you know it's gonna it's all purposeful um so yeah so let's pop into Maya with that in mind. And I'm going to uh, first, since we've we've been kind of working in random scenes, I want to organize everything. So I'm going to go to project window here. And then I'm going to I'm going to navigate to a new one. So I'm going to make a new project. And that's going to be in course materials. You can also just navigate to wherever you want it. Um, so I'm going to cancel that, but course materials is fine for me. I'm going to do art four to six. Um, let's do 2021 spring. Spring 2021. Let's do that. 
There you go. And accept. And that's all you need to do really, uh, because now when you, you save scene as, it's gonna take you into that project hierarchy that you just made. Uh, it's just a really good way of localizing everything. So when, when you're working in a bigger studio, all of the images are under that hierarchy, all the textures, all of the, the sounds, all of the renders that so, and we use this because if you have to render on campus, then you're going to need to send your project over to them. And this is how you organize it. So be sure you do this as well. Um, but I'm going to say rat retopo is the, the scene that I'm making. Retopo. So save as. And I'm going to go to File, Import. And let's do, let's navigate to where I was saving all of those. I think I just saved it in uh, Course Materials 47 Scenes Sculpt, I think. Scenes Sculpt, Rat Sculpt High. So let's just import all of these. Um, oh man. Can we do more than one? No, nah, it doesn't look like it. That's tragic. Let's start with the uh, rat body, decimated. Boom. So that's imported in the scene. And look, we got our good old rat, right? And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna import the rest of it just to save a little bit of time, but I'll just start the retopology process on this bad boy. First step is you click your rat or your character. Next step is you click magnet button up here. This is make surface live or make selected object live. So you click that. Now you'll see it's highlighted in here. And this is why we work with symmetry a lot because now we can just go into our modeling toolkit and then we can go down to a new tool. New tool, brand new guys, fresh off the shelf. New tool quad draw. Ooh. So now instead of having to go through the process and be like, I'm gonna extrude all this ear and extrude scale and inset, like that, that would be possible. But now you can just, uh, that, new to, that new tool smell, yes, indeed. Um, now what you can do is uh, first turn on symmetry, object X. So now you can just boop, boop, just put little points in here, boop, boop, bang. So I'm just basically left clicking in the scene until I have four points. And then you hold shift and then you left click again and you'll, it'll create a poly right there. So it's just super intuitive to, to use this way. And I'm just gonna set up a bunch of points right here, right? Like I'm, I'm, if you can see the kind of quads within here, I'm sort of making just edge flow that outlines that shape of the, of the eyebrow, right? I need to outline that. That's gonna be big for me to get in there. So if I just press, uh, hold shift and then left click in these, it's gonna start making those points for me, those, uh, the actual poly in there. And then you can always left click on these newly created polys and sort of drag around the different points, the different edges, the different faces, like that's all going to work for you. Um, and you can also go up in density on here, right? So if I have, if, if I want another span in here, but I already made those polys, I'm like, ah, damn, what can I do? I can just hold control, boom. And then it, you can just cut edge loops into this. Um, now I might not go that high poly, uh, because I am going to be in a game engine and it's, this is a very low res sort of game, you know? So we do, I don't need to go super detailed. Uh, so I might reduce this later, but like you can also do really great things with, uh, it's called relaxing. Let me get, let me get a few more points on this though. So let me complete this edge loop. Cause I want an edge loop around here that goes back into into this side of this, right? Because we're I'm basing this topology off this idea, right? I want like a little loop around each of those eye sockets. And then maybe 
so this works better with human anatomy than this rat, but like maybe we'll get that the raccoon mask sort of shape in there as well. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, we're basically just going in, remaking all of those points, remaking every single one. It's also good to sort of do a little bit of basic math slash counting and kind of find the endpoints of your eyes and be like, okay, so this is, a, this is like the outside of the eye and this would probably be the inside of the eye. So then I like to count the spans between this. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so eight spans there. And I like to have the bottom also have the same amount. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, six. So six. So I need two more spans right here. Boom, boom. And we just keep on trucking, guys. We just keep on trucking. Absolutely keep on trucking. See how this character is coming to life now? And this is why I, I wanted you guys to be pretty far along at this point because it, it does take a while. Uh, once you get used to it, though, it's very therapeutic to sort of go through every shape and just, uh, oh, sometimes it'll, it'll auto make the wrong one. Uh, so you just have to go undo that, maybe move a, a few points around. But yeah, in this shape, like, this nose protrudes out, right? So I want to outline that. It's always, if you have a shape that, that would be an extrusion in regular Maya, like, we're going to need to make that sort of topology here as well. Dun, dun, dun. There's some there's some other really cool um, hotkeys for this, but I want to show you one specifically. So all right, so before I do that though, like look at this sort of poly. Like this is going around there, but I want to make it. Look at how like deep in the skin it is. Like so, this isn't a good poly to me. First, I would go in and start to outline the shape of this jowl. Right, definitely get that in there. That's that's a big change on the model. Like so, you want that represented in there. Also, might as well outline the rest of this cheek. You know, might as well. So you see how I'm just making these points with left click, and then I'm shift left clicking to to auto fill them. And I'm gonna go through. I would get the rest of my clothes in before I, I start going down like the the neck and stuff. Um, but that's it's the same process for the rest of the model. Same process. Oops, messed up there. And you might have to rotate your camera around to get like a good, like sometimes it wants to auto fill the wrong segment. So sometimes you have to just kind of tweak the camera into a certain position to get what you want. Here I kind of want this crease down the middle. So go in here, boom, see that? So now I have a nice edge loop flowing into here and then outlining this nose, all this good stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much the basics of it. There's uh, say that now like this is, I've done this like a, a decent amount of times now. So I kind of know what's going on, but you guys might make some mistakes, right? So then how do you go about fixing those, right? Um, whoops, computer's slowing down a little bit. Um, to delete any sort of uh, feature on this, like uh, any sort of face, any edge loop, any vert out in the middle of nowhere, you just hold control and shift, All right? So if I, if I didn't have that in the right spot, I could just control shift and delete those and make those again. Um, one extra, now this is like my favorite feature of the tool that I'm about to show you is relax, right? Relax. I'm not telling you to relax. I'm, I'm gonna be telling this mesh to relax. So say I, say I insert an edge loop here, boom. Now, if you hold shift, you see how like my cursor says relax under it. So now if I go over this, oh, look at that. 
buttery smooth Whew. that is that is nice you know that is nice it really evens out the spacing here sometimes it can be a bit destructive and you'll lose a little bit of shape uh but for the most part it's pretty good so if i go in here these are too close together just relax that just relax that hmm mm -mm -mm. delicious delicious topology and see see how if i relax here it kind of pinches a bit too much so like in the, in those cases avoid relaxing there for for the meantime you know um but yeah just keep going through here my this, this is getting a little bit too spread out here so i might insert an edge loop and continue here there you go i can relax those as well but yeah so that's retopology like look at look at how simple that is to like sort of go over all this geometry like before you'd have to just model this from a box like we were doing all the other stuff you know um but like now you can sculpt up in zbrush and not have to worry about where your geometry is flowing you know uh until you get into maya again you can just Kind of go in. You can also shift and then left click drag to do multiple faces at once, but I, I find that to be unreliable. Like sometimes it'll just automatically like make the wrong sort of span between it. Um, I saw some videos where they mentioned it's important to start big and just create the wraps around key parts. Yeah, yeah. A lot of artists split up. Uh, like they will start in, like instead of building out from one mask. They'll, they'll say, go to the arm and start outline, uh, outlining some, some key forms on here. Oops, sorry, Peter's slowing down a little bit. I, I also like to, when I'm kind of conquering these like big areas, I like to just make some sparse points like this and then like this, see like there, then right here. See how I'm doing like very distant points on this, right? Now, of course, for this, I need to bring in the shirt, right? So I'm matching it up to my actual geo. Um, but then I can go in and just press control left click to sort of even out these points. Um, I wouldn't be all willy nilly about the amount of points on here. Whenever you have a, oh, sorry about that. Might have to drag this back in. That's just left click, remember? um whenever you whenever you're outlining a form like this be sure that you're using an even amount of spans right and by spans i mean faces so if we kind of look at the the mid section like this is the middle of the arm right here uh the 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 amount of spans between this and the middle of the bottom section right here is one two three one, two, three, right? And you might be like, that's odd, right, Mike? Uh, what the hell are you doing? Uh, but if you look at the top of this, right? Because that was just one quarter of the model. Uh, if we count these up, it's one, two, three as well. So then we have six on this side, and then hopefully we'll have six on this side as well. So I like to do this, because uh, if you start with an odd number, as you go down that arm, you're going to, and you like get to these closer points, it's going to be hard to sort of reroute this geometry into uh, different shapes, uh, because you'll have that you, you're you're like, by starting with an odd number, you're going to have a triangle in there somewhere, you know. Uh, so definitely start with even numbers. Let's see here. Uh, and let's count them up. Boom. Uh, to, to combine these instead of doing like this and then deleting, like that would work, but uh, you can also weld points by just dragging them onto each other. Boom, bang, right there. Again, super freeform. My favorite way of modeling in, uh, in Maya, you know. Uh, but yeah, so let's count them up now. So let's start from this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
9, 10, 11, 12, which is perfect. 12, 12 divides fantastically as, as it goes down the, the model. Like, so that'll be a fine amount of, of points. Then it's just up to you to sort of polish the positions of them. Um, and I would keep, oops, there we go. I would keep 12 down here as well. Uh, then I would start kind of working at the core. Again, I'd have my belt and stuff in here. Uh, but we don't have that at the time. Uh, so I'm just starting with four around the waist here. And we don't have the tail either, unfortunately. But I start with four, right? Just one, two, three, four. And... Now, no, what, no matter what I do, it's going to be even, but I like to sort of make it even on both sides there, right? So now it's eight. And if I want to add another one, be 12. I'm always matching up where those, those go because the, they, they will probably at some point reroute into each other. Um, and yeah. And so I'm glad that we do a little bit of that uh, rerouting in the first obstacle course, because a lot of the time you're gonna need to sort of figure out clever ways to sort of get this geometry to, to flow in different directions, you know? Uh, for instance, right here, see how this edge loop, it was gonna go down off the mouse right around this jowl part, but then now it's rerouted with this little this little triangle junction right here, this little three point junction. So that, that diverts the flow. So you have to keep thinking about that. Um, you can also do cool things, like there, there's some other hotkeys in here that you're, you're free to look up, I believe. What is it? It's not control. Oh, no, it's like, it's like tab. Yeah, so tab can extrude out. Um, that's kind of cool, but tab tab middle mouse drag extrudes the whole edge loop, which can get, uh, you can get some cool results from it, but it can also kind of start, like see how this is starting to drift in one direction. I probably want to stabilize that. So again, that was tab middle click. Feel free to look up the, uh, the hotkeys. Uh, they're, they're well documented on, on Maya. I believe other Mayas might also have a little help box over here. Um, when mm, I, there, there's, there's a way to get the tooltip to pop up, but, um, but yeah, but the, the bread and butter is just clicking points, creating them and then uh, shift clicking to, to fill in the poly in there. Um, and then just being able to weld stuff together, you know, because it's basically all of the modeling tools in one. Uh, like that was just target weld, right? Um, the tab is extrude, you know? Like, so yeah, that's just the sort of things that, to keep in mind. And always like start kind of low poly. Don't go like super detailed. Try to keep it low and clean and outline your, your forms that you want to keep together first because like I know that I want this pectoral to be outlined right because it's, it's, it's a strong form it needs to be represented um, so yeah you just lay that geometry in there and then uh, kind of fill in the gaps between your different shells of geometry but yeah so that was the quick like little intro to um, to getting retopology in there Again, I would do it with the whole, um, like the, all of the pieces represented, like I would import the, the clothes and all of that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it. And then once you, uh, if you ever click off of this and you go into a different object and uh, you're like, okay, so now how do I resume, right? Because if you click quad draw again, you're like starting a new quad draw. Uh, just make sure if you click off, just click on your base mesh again, like the uh, the the one that you're making, and then start quad draw from there, and it'll reinstate it just as as it was before. So yeah.
you're all, you're always free to, to click off, see what it looks like, and click back on. Uh, it does create these new faces with soft, I mean, with hard normals, which means that they're going to be looking really rigid. And like, look at this triangle. I need to get one more division in there to make it a quad. But let me just relax that out. Um, but yeah, so if I click off this, and then say I hide my my mouse by turning it, making it selectable again. Hide that. See how this comes in with like faceted faces right here. Uh, you can just click on this, and under their modeling menu, mesh display. Soften edges, and there you go. So you can see what your actual geometry looks like. And this is the geometry that we're going to uh, start painting over in Substance, right? So when I say that, like your your final model is not going to look like your ZBrush sculpt, uh, it's true because like this is this is like the geometry that you're going to get out of ZBrush. Um, and we do we do things later. Um, Unfortunately, it's like out of the scope of the class, but we normally go in and sort of project all of this detail from these objects on to this low poly detail or to these low poly objects. So we, it, we import both the high and the low into substance, and then it bakes all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit out of the scope of the class, I'm going to be honest, because there's, there's always problems that you have to clean up. And uh, and yeah, it'll just be a big time sink. We don't, we unfortunately don't have enough time to to spend on that, uh, which really sucks because like that's how you get like really cool detail on it. I think I think a few of us are pretty far along, so you could potentially try to do that. Um, but again, don't don't spend a bunch of time trying to figure that out um, because unfortunately we need to keep moving. However, for if you're if you're going for if you're kind of trying to study this for like a job then uh, then I, I would really recommend learning that part of the pipeline. It's, it's called like the low poly to high poly pipeline or high to low poly pipeline. And it's, it's industry standard pretty much. Like it's just, it's like a basic thing that, that you'll need to know uh, if you're a modeler. Uh, man, you gotta talk to the department and get some of this class, but I, Keely, I do, I do, but uh, you know, there's problems. There's problems. There's money problems. There's like uh, class enrollment problems. There's labs. Like there's only a certain amount of labs on campus. So then you can't have all the classes at the same time uh, because I'd love to teach that. Like I'd, I'd love to teach like those ones separately, you know, so we can get the most out of all of this. But yeah. Yeah, the short answer is yes, we should definitely split this class up into every single thing that he's teaching because they are all different jobs. Yeah. <laughs> the long answer is budget. We, we're not shy of students that's for sure we're actually getting too many students but because oh, the budget because yeah. the budget got cut because of covid um like permanently from all cal state schools uh there's a restructuring going on so that's why things are getting a little bit squished and crammed if you guys want to know about behind the scenes stuff i barely pay attention to it honestly i never go to the staff meetings um but <laughs> um that's essentially what's going on um so it is unfortunate but you know what the school actually listens to they listen to their students because you guys have the most powerful voice as the customers when we professors talk they're like yeah yeah just deal with it but when the students finally complain the only reason why the ceiling tiles don't fall on people's heads anymore is because a student body got together and said this is going to kill us please fix it and they fixed it within a semester that ceiling tile problem has been there since i was a student mm -hmm. so you know yeah. if you guys get together as students and you say we demand the right to have a broader like variety of classes because too much is being put in one class on the adjunct professors which is both mike and myself then you know then they'll finally start making moves because they pay more attention to students it's unfortunate to say than what the professors have to say we're just the adjuncts <laughs> yeah. so if you want to have change in the system it's up to you guys truly to make those petitions and to actually say like we deserve more thorough education when it comes to these things because it is mike is talk talking about everything that's industry standard and current right now but he's also forced to teach i think six different things in one yeah. class yeah yeah it's like six oh. different yeah it's it's a little bit yeah. much 
a little much to get over. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. So, you know, that's, it's honestly, truly in the power in your guys' hands. And I know that sucks because you guys are already dealing with like a full load of schedule and all this stuff too. But you are also realizing that you're kind of getting shafted in a way of having to kind of just blitz through all this stuff. And then you have to research on your own. Mike had to research on his own when he was an undergrad. I had to do it on my own as an undergrad. So we're trying to bring it into our classrooms, but there's only so much we can do. Exactly. So anyway, yeah. that's an end of my spiel. I'll get off my soapbox. Bye. No, thank you for your soapbox. That was very, that, that was exactly, yeah, that's the eternal struggle of, of this class and, and all the classes, to be honest. Like, uh, yeah, I just wish, here's where I send the, I don't know where you send the email. I don't, I, Sarah, do you know where they would like even, you know, no, nothing speaks stronger than grassroots movements and organization. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys set it up and then you just send it to probably advising, right? It will make its rounds eventually. So if you go to like uh, the Coda advising, say like, hey, we have this concern and like 30 people sign in for this concern, then it will get some attention. If it's like more than 30 people, then lots of people are like, oh, you get, everyone has this concern. They want more classes. And obviously there's some back and forth, right? But uh, the College of the Arts Department only has so much power, but we always have to answer to the chancellor, who is like the god of all the CSUs. But if it goes through the dean and then the chancellor, then it will make some noise and make some movement. I think typically if you want some changes, you'll probably have to just get through to the dean and then the president of the school. So it's the president of the school is the one who is determining what goes on and like we have to follow the president's orders and the president's also following the chancellor's orders, right? So that's kind of like the structure, like the dirty underbelly of the scheduling, if you will. As adjuncts, we're pretty much powerless. We do have power over the classroom and how we would conduct it. So we're really lucky to have Mike because he's pretty much trying to teach us as much as possible with the industry stuff. If you get a different professor, they might do something different. Still really valid stuff, but also because of time constraints and depending on um, depending on the strength of the student's work or like how they're comprehending stuff, um, things might get scaled back a little. And there's already been kind of like the art school wide note of scaling back on homework, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have already heard of this because uh, people are just too overwhelmed with online schooling, right? Which is understandable. Everyone's like overwhelmed. We're all very tired of being on front of the computer too much, but vice versa. That means less work, less quality work for portfolios, less work for the professors to also look over. And then we also in turn get graded, quote unquote, graded by the quality of our students' work as well when it comes to teacher reviews. So, but, you know, I honestly don't care about that. I don't think Mike really cares about it either because he's just caring about teaching you guys. But that's just like, there's all these different levels that that's like behind the scenes that we have to worry about. Um, so if you guys want change in like, the scheduling and the system and you want more classes that are talking about more current uh, topics and industry stuff, then that's something that is honestly, it'll only be making waves if it's done by the students, not by the professors. We don't get a say, yeah. we just get hired and said, here's your contract, this is what you're teaching and uh, good luck. Um, you have max 24 and then I always oversee 24 just cause like there's just people need my class, people need Mike's class. And so it just crams in and that means more workload on the professors who are trying to meet everyone and et cetera. So yeah. that's essentially kind of what's going on. If I was to kind of summarize everything um, behind the scenes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because also like, it, it's important that you guys make your voice heard because when, when they hear that, then they're thinking of like enrollment, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, there is interest in enrollment in this class. Like, it's not like just some professor being like, I want to teach this class for me. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's the actual student body being like, no, we need this skill. So, and I know yeah. it's possible because Fullerton currently has uh, th these split out into disciplines. So it's like, uh, you'll have a character modeling class and you'll have a character modeling class two, and you'll have a character animation class, like in 3D and mm -hmm. animation like class 3D2, you know, and then rigging, like they, they split them up into those sort of disciplines, you know? Yeah. So Computer know animation possible. needs its own department, honestly. <laughs> yeah, <it'd laughs> it be... just needs its own department, so for yeah. sure. So, but yeah, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the roots of, um, well, one, our enrollment issues, but also the, uh, <laughs> the topology. So, Keep that in mind, guys. Um, now I will show the real wrong way to do it, but you know, 
like I said, we're on we're on some time constraints, so this is an alternative. It's not it's not gonna be the best, but it will still it'll still work for us. We're gonna use Z remesher. And uh, so if I go into geometry, Z remesher, and then if I do uh, half, you'll see how it's gonna sample this. Uh, let me turn on the polys. So right now, unusable, we can't use this. Like we shouldn't have this many triangles on the character. A lot of them are stretched out. They're gonna deform poorly. Uh, if I go Z remesher half, it's going to think for a while because it does have 45,000 points to go through. Mm -hmm. Boom, there you go. So that's that's automatically looking like kind of what we're going for, right, guys? Uh, it might be a bit too, uh, too dense, though, still. Active points, 41,000, like that's that's a lot on for for like a character you know because if, if you go in and try to skin this you're gonna have to paint skin weights for all of these so i would say that you can simplify it even more uh there's also a neat tip so notice how on my like on my eye whoops on my eye right here the eye socket uh these polys don't form that 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 ring right there's nothing really outlining that they, they kind of outline the brow and then they kind of go off in their own direction. They don't give a, a shit about anything else. So we need to kind of tell ZBrush exactly how we want these to be organized, right? And I'm gonna go into Z Remesh Guide right here. It's like the very last, uh, the very last uh, brush in the list. And I'm gonna go in with a kind of a smaller brush. So I'm scaling this down and you'll see why because we're about to make basically our edge loops. So if I drag on the surface right here, it's making a curve that conforms to the skin right there. You see that? And it's it, when I, now if I tell it to use curves strength down here in Z remesh, and if I bump that up to like, 90 or something is going to really pay attention to this like it, this this number is basically how much it pays attention to where these curves are so if we go in and make one for pretty much everything right here you can always continue those links uh, i believe you can hold alt and then drag through to kind of cut those ones if you don't if you don't like where you put one or you could control z either way it's going to work but yeah, so you can just route this up. Oh, sorry about that. My computer lagged for a second. Um, and we can just, you know, cut the surface up this way. Until, say, say I want like one, I want one to wrap around the entire mouth and go back into it, right? So I can go in, make a loop that goes around the mouth like that. And it should be good. I want like this cheek outline. So I'm gonna send one like this. I'm going to I'm gonna outline the ears as well, right? So if we just drag this around there. Oops, got that one over there. I'm just dragging this along the ear, boom. So it's just putting in those guidelines, right? And you can, you can loop around all this ear right there. You could even get like the subsequent loop inside if you want that. Um, and I'm just doing this fast for demonstration purposes. Where was this tool again? This is um this is Z remesh guide, Z remesh guide right here. Gotcha. Uh, and then now, if we run Z brush, or I mean Z remesh right here, uh, we can use we can use uh, let's do half and keep adapt off adaptive density, uh, and then let's do curve strength. Let's punch punch that up to like ninety five somewhere in there. Uh, 
Uh, and then I'm going to ZB mesh. Boom. So see how it's it's a lot lower lower of a poly count. It's probably still too high, honestly, if you're if you're planning on animating. Um, but see how it, it follows that eye again, you know, um, and it follows that that curve of the mouth. Got a little bit janked up in here, but you know that's fine. It's fine for this is like a automatic sort of system to do this. Like the, you'd have to go through each of these little fingers as well, the wrist, just basic, basically wherever we were putting in our like sort of guides on this, like I would go into the wrist next and start to, to bridge the gap between that. Um, we're going to do the same with, with, with our, our, our Z remesh guides in here as well. Is it possible to do most of it in Z remesh and hitting the high importance parts in Maya? Yeah, yeah, you could definitely like export the, oh, sorry, one second, the computer's slowing down. Whoa. Uh, so you could do a lot of the important parts uh, in Maya, however, like, like you could always fudge around with these these little parts. Like, like this is this is messed up in here, right? Like it's coming coming to this sort of group, then and then like it's diverting down the ear in here. So you could go in and try to clean that up, but like you'll find that there's problems in that like you'll have to figure out how to terminate that edge like the edge loop as it goes around like you'll have to delete all these faces out and then kind of reroute those those polys somewhere right and try to keep it in quads so it's going to be it's, it's it's gonna be hard to deal with to be honest to to, to get all that in there but uh but yeah so I, I recommend this way if you're if you're running low on time just setting in some guides on the very important places um, try to get one uh, down the side of the of the torso as well, so you don't have a bunch of like windy stuff there, um, and some down the length of the arm too. So it's good. you're going to benefit a lot from from more guides there. Uh, to also get this um, uh, to get all this together, just realized how ripped that rat is. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's 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 buff. Um, to get all of this kind of together as well, you could, uh, you could go to merge, merge visible, and then pop that open. And so now I have this this merged version of the mesh geometry uh, dynamesh. And then just dynamesh this together. And so now it's scanned that. Let's turn off the polyline. So now you have this like kind of lower, lower res version. And let's up the resolution of that dynamesh a little bit to like 300. There we go. And so now you could do your, your Z remesh on this. So say. Like I need to outline this color, right? So get some zebra uh, Z remesher guides in here. Cause a lot of our characters have clothes, you know? So, oops, can do that. Yeah, so we just have, we're just telling ZBrush exactly where to, to set this stuff. Oh, it didn't have. And it's important to have topology that follows model well because it's important for animating later. Yes, it's important for animating later. It's also important for having nice seams in our UV map. And it's kind of hard for me to talk about that right now because we don't know what UV mapping is. Um, but basically, we're about to go in to um, texturing, right? We're about to color these models up. And before you color that model up, you need to uh, give the computer a map of where all of that information should go, right? Um, and I'm sure you've seen it before. Let me let me see if I can just pull it up uh, real quick. Character UV map. Um, I'm sure you've seen like these cursed images, right? Like this is what a, this is what a three D 
character's texture looks like. Like it's just this like folded out nightmare of a of a like image, you know, and that that's happening because look, the we had to take these three D points right here, right, all of our verts. And then we had to cut a seam down the back of the head and spread it out into 2D, right? So these are all three, these are all 2D representations of your 3D character. Like, so this is, you can tell this is the face. So the face got like cut down from like the top of the skull down the back of it at the neckline and got spread out, you know? Um, so that, that's, that's how we, that's how we do it, you know? And so in order to have clean lines to do this, uh, we can definitely do it without clean lines, you know? So we can Z, one second, Z brush is taking, it's time to open up again. Okay, there we go. Um, like it, if you Z remesh and you don't get like a clean loop around somewhere that you're gonna cut in the UV, um, then like it's gonna be a little bit more annoying to get a nice UV map. Uh, not anything like insanely annoying, but like, it's going to be like, ah, I wish it wasn't like this, you know, uh, so that, and, but yeah, it's mostly for deformation in animation. Like it, like think about how much the shoulder area deforms when you're moving it around. Right. So you want to have like a lot of loops in there. Um, but yeah, uh, two, two dudes intertwined, two dudes intertwined. Sound, sounds interesting to me, but um, th this was just one, if you're talking about this texture, this is just one one guy right here um, in here. Imagine a VR horror game, explore a haunted game dev office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, this is also a nice little visualization of it. You can see like, each portion of the character. And they call that UV unwrapping. Um, or UV mapping, both of those are kind of the same thing. Kind of the same thing there. So it's a lot easier to look at, yes, 100%, 100%. This one as well, you can see how low poly this character is, but then, you know, with nice texturing looks, looks really nice. It's super realistic, it's, yeah, when it's, that's when it gets terrifying, like, ooh, what happened to this person? But yeah. So I, I recommend you guys do your, your retopology in here because you're going to learn more about it and you're going to understand kind of how to, like, you need to set up your, your edge loops in here properly, you know, but um, we're like, we're, like I said, we're low on time. So if you have to, oh my God, ZBrush just loves auto saving constantly. There we go. Um, if you need to Z remesh in here, then go for it. I would just, I, I think it's most practical to Dynamesh your whole character together at the end. Definitely save before you do that. Um, and then draw out your, your lines. Make sure you do a better job than me of outlining these shapes. Get the, get the eye outlined as well. All this, I'm just going quickly because I want to round this up before I start addressing questions. There we go. There we go. All right. And then uh, once you get all those set up, then I would do a Z remesh high on the curve strength because we set those curves in there for a reason and then uh i would use this target poly count if you if you have like a high like this is 1.2 million polys uh target poly count makes it uh like like this number like it's five right now so it's aiming for like a 5,000 poly model which i think is uh, a good idea so uh let's do that adapt might mess with that but uh you know it's fine and yeah, don't get me wrong, Z remesh is going to take a while because it has to think about all of these points, you know. Oh, error occurred. I find that this can happen on like sort of some of these interior curves. 
uh, like if, if you draw them over themselves or if they go off the mesh, sometimes that can cause it to error out. So just make sure you're, you're careful when you're laying those in. Um, yeah, let's try that again. Hopefully that was the problem. Otherwise it might be something. It's usually something with those curves that, that might be causing it to error out. Damn, yeah. Let's try. So I just alt clicked on the model to get rid of all my curves. Um, but let's just Z remesh so you can see it with the target polygon count. So it's Maya for precision or ZBrush for quickness. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, because you're going to get something that you can use out of ZBrush really fast. Uh, but it's not the proper way. That's not how you do it in the industry. You got you got to go through like look look at this mesh. This is just like a default. This is without any ZBrush guides. Like look at how kind of lumpy my collar got. Look at how uh, kind of just crumpled everything is. And this is like what you would be using for your your uh, your character, you know. So it'd be a, a bit of a shame, you know. But I mean, yeah. That's, that's why we do retopo in Maya, guys. Um, but we might be running out of time, you know? So then this is our only option if your back's up against the wall. RuneScape 2000 graphics, not exactly 2000, you know? It's a little bit better. Let's, let's see what it looks like in Maya if we uh, export it right. Scuffed retopo. Let's import that into Maya, see what it looks like. Open scene. Actually, let's file import. Uh, rat scuffed retopo. There we go. And then if we, it's, it has these hard faces, right? So if we go into modeling UV, uh, or not UV, uh, mesh display, soften edge. Well, so it's not. It's not great, but it's not like the end of the world either. You know, like we still have a lot of detail. Like these pants definitely got lost. Definitely got lost in there. Um, this chest that has like awful edge flow. You see how, see how in like what I was starting to do, you were getting stuff that outlined the pectorals. And here you have like no edge flow here at all. Like it's just going, wherever and this is just yeah this is just dead you know so that's that's what we're trying to avoid but uh you know not always able not always able to get everything the way we want but um yeah hopefully you can mitigate some of that with z remesh guides you know uh this one's probably a bit too far gone at this point but i you could just go back in and try to clean it up a little bit but this is so sad. <laughs> this is the this is the this is what happens when we have some some close deadlines. Got to make some got to make some cuts. Got to make some cutbacks. Yeah, definitely cry face. But I mean, it's usable. It's usable. You could UV this and texture it. It's not going to look. Uh, Perfect. Development hell is yelling. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. But yeah, so if you're going to do Z remesh, try to get some guides in there. Um, otherwise, you're going to, like, like I was setting up some guides for the collar, but then it kind of aired out. So I'd have to redo them. I didn't want to spend a bunch of time. But you get something that kind of follows the curves of that. Whereas uh, the regular Z remesh was just like, ah, fuck that. We don't care about your color. <laughs> you could always go in and kind of paint back in that detail a little bit to sort of try to save it in uh, substance. But that'll be for next class. That'll be for next class. Um, next class, I want everyone's retopo done. So that's why I'm like a little bit worried for folks that don't have their their character um, at like a far along point that's why i'm i'm very fine with you guys scaling it back and and not not going like 
don't do the full character if you if you're like struggling to finish just like the the head and the bust like just make it the bust only get in, in, in and really refine that stuff and get it re-topologized um if you can do it in maya it's gonna be a lot more effective uh if not i understand and i'm sad but i i understand um i'm thinking about how i'll oh, show it high flat one scientists were mostly flat with a lot of painting sheets to make them look more 3d yep yep that's uh that basically works in those older games because they didn't have like good lighting yet so the problem is if you if you paint something that looks realistic from one angle and then they like move into different lighting it doesn't look as good um that's why a lot of hand painted games don't have like realistic lighting in there um yeah, Substance next class though. Yeah, so feel free to download Substance Painter. Um, there's a lot of different Substance programs. Uh, basically, the main two are Substance Painter and Substance Designer though. Um, Substance Designer makes materials for Substance Painter, but Substance Painter comes with like pretty much everything you need to get started. Uh, and we're not gonna go into Designer in this class. Designer is really cool though. I love Designer, um, but yeah. What's a student uh, license, right? Yeah, you, uh, they have student licensing for Substance Painter. I, th I believe it's free if you have the uh, Adobe thing that, that a, lot of, a lot of students seem to have. Uh, you get like a, a month free if you don't do your student thing, but they do ask for a picture of your student ID or like something along the lines. And I'd recommend downloading it before next class for sure. Yeah, okay. Hell yeah. When is the overall model due? next week uh, or wait the, the the gray mesh is next week the gray mesh is next week gray mesh meaning the retopologized sculpt that's next week so that's why i'm giving z z remesher as an option for y'all it's not it's not clean but i i don't want y'all stressing about uh this class being like an unconquerable amount of work um but yeah all right so that's 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 um that's retopologizing do you uh, does anyone have any any questions for that for, like the concepts of that any of like the core concepts of, like why we do it like what our approach is you know Can you quickly just go over how you made those first initial squares? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me get my other rat out of here. Then I hid the base one, so let me go to my outliner. Windows outliner, there you go. And let me unhide that. So first steps were uh, get your model in here. Again, I would get my clothes in here as well and just re-apologize all of that at once. Um, and then I would click on the mesh, click this magnet up here to make it live. You'll see it fills this little box in here. And then turn on symmetry, quad draw, and then left click to just get some points in here and then shift left click to, to bring them into reality. And then I like to start outlining my shapes with a little bit of uh, some, some edge loops in here. Oops. Boom, bang, pow, right there. And there you go. So that's a little bit too low poly. I'd probably go in and start adding some spans in here. Whoops. But yeah, your computer world probably goes slow during this part. This is a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a complex thing to do. That's why we decimate before we send it over. But yeah, so that's the basic idea. So for my cougar, I was going to do fiber mesh. Should I just not do that then? Since yeah, I, I, 
I wouldn't, yeah, because we're just going to go back into Maya anyways. I don't, I've don't. i never tried to send fiber mesh over to Maya. I don't know how well that, that translates into Maya. Um, gotcha, but I can just do that substance painter. I can make that same kind of effect. Yeah, you can, you can like, you'll be able to apply a fur sort of texture to it. Um, so it'll, it won't, it won't stick off from the, the model and break the silhouette. It won't do that. Um, it'll just be on the surface, you know, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, if you were doing like fur for like a movie, like or something you would, or, or a game, uh, it's like a little bit different. Um, in, in movies, they have like hair, like actual, like, like actual little strands of fur in there. Um, for games, you basically have a bunch of polys. So you have a bunch of free floating. Uh, let me select this. You have a bunch of free floating polys that are just like one quad like this. And they're really tiny and they have a small fur texture on them. And then they're just placed on the model like this. They call them cards. And they're really effective. Like any hair that you've seen in video games is just cards. Um, I believe they tried to do something crazy for Uncharted 4, but then it ended up being uh, lame and not working. It was like too expensive to process all like the hair, but yeah. So you'd have a bunch of fur cards like this kind of going along the surface. And they'd be about that size too? They'd be, well, for like a triple A game, they'd be smaller. They'd be like, they'd be like tiny like this. Um, but it also depends on like what your budget for that character would be. You know, because if, if, mm -hmm. if you had like a wolf in the game that's like far away from the screen, you wouldn't, you wouldn't bother with like super tiny cards. But if you had like a character who's talking in like a cutscene that has like close up like a, a beard then you'd have something like this that's like even smaller you know but yeah so that's okay. hair is a whole other can of worms really because uh it takes a long time to do too to they call it grooming there's like artists that do only hair in studios they're like a grooming yeah artist. i was researching it on youtube and just the all of the tutorial videos are like an hour and a half long oh my right God. right <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. It's also just really tedious too. Um, a lot of studios outsource hair grooms because of how tedious they are. But yeah, that's it for um, that's it for the lecture, right? So feel free to to watch this front part of it back. It'll be a lot simpler and shorter, um, even though it is like an hour long. Like this is pretty complex stuff. A lot of steps in there. Uh, and it's, it's showing both methods, showing Maya and ZBrush. So just keep that in mind. Um, Mike told me you can, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you guys are like wondering what a button in ZBrush does, you can hold control over it and kind of, kind of read. But like, I, honestly, like some of these can be like paragraphs long, so might not be the most easy to, to sort of look at, but, but yeah. I live for paragraphs. Yeah, some people do, some people do. Uh, I have but, a question. When we um, export it, Mm -hmm. Can we just mer like have a save where it's separated parts and can we just export as one merged tool? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Easier to do it in separate sub tools. I, well, I do separate because um, I'm, all right. So you guys don't really need to. I do separate because I'm, I'm used to baking high poly stuff onto that low poly. Um, and there's a few more steps in that. But if you want to, if you want to export just as, one let's see here we can do that that decimate all and then merge visible and then rat merged 
right here will pop up. It'll, it'll, it'll give you a new tool in your tool palette. So you just click over on that. And then this is like your merged one. And then that's the one that you'll export. Gotcha. Do you find it's like the same difficulty to quadra on that? Or does um, it really matter? No, you, you'll run into some, some interesting issues, right? Because uh, if you have a bunch of objects in here, um, oops, sorry, I got to move back into Maya brain. Um, if you have like a, a, a collar in there, let me just import my other collar. Import shirt cuff decimated. There you go. Import. So as I'm quad drawing on this stuff, like one, they're two separate objects, right? So if I wanted to quad draw them on them as one, I would have to mesh, combine them, and then left click that, and then make that live and start quad drawing from there. Um, but you'll run into an issue where sometimes these points can get inside of these different meshes, right? So you'll be quad drawing along, everything's fine, it's looking great. And then you'll get into like a, a crevice somewhere and it'll be really hard for Maya to sort of uh, understand that shape and, and be able to make, like when you hold shift, it won't wanna like automatically make a poly there. So you can run into some issues with that. Um, but I'd say, I would say for our first time, it might be easier to do it like this as, as all as like one shape, you know? And then, uh, kind of just going along the shell of that. But when you're when you're baking maps, usually you'd break it up into the shapes for easier baking. So I would probably do. I would keep like the. Uh, if I brought in the belt buckle file import. Buckle decimated. I would. Uh, let me make this live. Oh my God, object. I would make this live and then I would uh, quad draw on this only. Something like this. But yeah, so I, I would keep this object as separate, but think, think about it this way too. Like you guys don't need to model like the inside of anything. Like no one's gonna see the inside of this belt buckle. I just do that because it's easier for me to bake maps, but we're not baking maps in this class. Um, so it'll be a lot, it'll be a lot easier if you just kind of deal with it as on, only thinking about like the external shapes, you know? Uh, like you don't need to model the inside of the cuffs. You can just cut them off. But that you can just cut them off at the at the arm right there. So you can, you guys can take a lot of shortcuts on this, for sure. Uh, does that make sense? Do you need any? Uh... Yeah, that does make sense. Okay. So when when would you do the inside piece and when baking a map? What is that exactly? That that's basically taking uh, all this high poly data, like like see how the shirt has like uh, wrinkles and stuff in it. We can basically have something super low poly. Let me pull up our good friend Sketchfab. Um, you can have something high poly or something low poly look like high poly by baking that detail onto your one second. Oh my God, this is, why is this going? Oh my God, characters, creatures, there we go. Let's find something that looks nice. Um, mm -hmm. Let's try William. William seems pretty cool. Let's also try this dragon column. It's a, my computer's trying to load these up. Taking a while though. There we go. So William's looking amazing in here. And you can see like he even has pores. And if we turn on 
our model inspector. Let's do matcap. Uh, matcap plus surface. There we go. So see how like there's like little pore data and stuff. Like this this could be sculpted in ZBrush and then baked so that they, we we baked on that all those pores and all the wrinkles and all that stuff onto this wireframe and granted yeah look at like the hair cards on this one like my god um for all his like little little beard um this like this is incredibly like high poly you know but like this can still run at real time in like today's standards um but yeah this is, this is what we're saying though because like if you have like super low super high quality detail in those like pores and stuff <laughs> You, you need to project that onto uh, your low poly, onto this low poly stuff right here. Okay, I think, yeah, that makes sense then. Yeah, because otherwise, like, there's no way that, like, an animator would be able to, like, if, if the mesh, if his mesh were dense enough, or as dense as it was in ZBrush, there'd be no way to animate that because the computer would die. It would, like, overheat whenever you try to, like, move anything around so we have to use a lot of like baking techniques so we bake on like all this high quality detail on that uh low poly model um but yeah damn you can see all like little all little hair cards Look at that hair, yeah, right? Oh my God. And this is this is why I say it takes a long time, you know? Cause like, <laughs> look at all those polys in there. <laughs> look at all those polys. What in the goddamn, usually the hair is done in like a, a plugin as well. Um, like Maya has something called XGen that people use for that. He's only $85. <laughs> what a steal. Um, and XGen is great like, to, to sort of make these different things. Oh, wow. Even the, even the shirt has hair cards. Look at that. My God. Just for all those little fuzzies. A very, very, very long time. <laughs> yeah, it definitely did. This person put some hours into this. Definitely put some hours into it, but I mean, it turns out great. It turned out amazing. Yeah, it almost overcomes the uncanny value a little bit. Yeah, just yeah. like a little bit deep. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Right. It's but like that's... something about the eyes, like the softening of the eyes, because like my problem with super realistic sculpts like this is that there's just something they just don't get right with the eyes, and then you just get that reaction <laughs> yeah but they did a great job like you could really see the amount of detail they did yeah no absolutely I, and it's I, it's it's fun to, to try this stuff too like that i'm trying to get better at some like realistic sculpting just because it's probably like my weakest point in modeling so like to see this stuff is like really inspiring you know also infuriating but uh but, <laughs> nah, i'm just kidding it's always good to, to push yourself that's okay. Um, I, I, I also have a hit list. You have a hit list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And bless oh. you, whoever sneezed. Yeah. No, I, I remember watching behind the scenes of the Rings, and the hair guy for Gollum was saying how his child grew up with all, all movies. And he's <laughs> and you saw yeah. how much hair Gollum has, right? It's like yeah. five strands. But he was like, that was like early days of computer early animation. Days. Yeah, yeah, right? Where they have a computer model along live action actors or doing some new tech but i was just like damn and now yeah. i understand yeah <laughs> probably have to like hand key every strand all five oh, strands i hope yeah not. i hope not yeah. they probably did though they probably did oh the i made that up i hope it's not true i think so because he did he worked every day 
for like 10 hours a day. I think it was more than 10 hours. And oh, he was geez. just, he's like, my child grew up and suddenly they were four years old. I'm like, that is the saddest. That's so, <laughs> that is so sad. Yeah. I remember one time I was working overtime at Sony and then like we, they, they provided dinner for us and then families would come in to like eat dinner with their loved one that worked at the studio. And I was like, Oh no, we should just be eating together and at home and not, suffering <laughs> it was so sad but uh you know uh, at least the families were able to come in i guess right i don't know <laughs> come in for free dinner you know <laughs> still not still sad but you know i was like a good dinner <laughs> yeah that's the thing what was that like if it was good food then yeah but if it wasn't then it's it's kind of a slap to the face you're not, you're not down yeah yeah i, I, actually, got to, I actually got games. to eat at riot games because my buddy works there and they actually have some pretty nice food there they so. have an amazing kitchen yeah yeah like it's yeah. like an amazing campus i was like the heck daniel yeah. <laughs> so he, ne- he never has to buy food so i was like all right oh it must be nice to have an employer that feeds you <laughs> well, yeah so that's uh that's what we're up to, guys. Retopology. Retopology. That's why I'm saying please finish your models as fast as possible so you can get onto retopology. So it does take a while. Um, but once you get into the hang of it and you start getting some music on, you're just kind of like a cruising around, making some verts. Podcast. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like th- this is the type of work that like once you get the hang of it, you can just listen to whatever like you could listen to music with like lyrics and stuff and not be bothered music with lyrics it's yeah its own I mean, category <laughs> i sound like a fucking robot saying it like that but i mean like i can't <laughs> no I, I understand oh okay yeah, yeah like i don't know it's just hard to work to lyrics sometimes when you're like trying to think really hard i have two spotify playlists one of them is songs with words and the other one is songs without them <laughs> songs with words songs without yeah that, i mean it's wise uh so it's x that disables enables symmetry yep do you humans also listen to the rhythmic noise oh yes. yeah definitely <laughs> yes indeed. what are you talking about of course <laughs> rhythmic noise is my favorite um but yeah so with that we're on a little bit of a let's go let's go to a little dinner break um i'll i'll be back here at 6 40 I'm going to eat a bunch of rice and chicken. Um, it's going to be delicious. I will probably still be eating it when I get back. But yeah, so when we get back, it'll just be working in class, a- answering questions, hopefully helping you guys re-apologize stuff. Uh, but yeah. All right. Going to riot for dinner. I'm going to riot. <laughs> it's been too much of a drive, and also they're probably closed down. <laughs> but you know. A little bit now. Yeah, 6.40. I'll be back at 6.40. I'll sit in the chat, too. <laughs> <gasps> Got some nice dog foldy there. In case you're... No, that was me doing an impression of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. Very accurate. All right, see you guys in a little bit.
Okay, there we go. <clears throat> What's up, y'all? Back from a break. Um, basically, the rest of the class is just gonna be me helping people out with problems. Uh, I know that there will be a lot. Um, so yeah, hit me up while I'm here. Um, I'd like to help people out with some some retopology issues if they're running into them as well. Um, because sometimes it can be tricky when you're like you're starting to like slowly build those like areas out, and then you get to like a place like the shoulder where you've already done the loop, and you're like, yeah, how do I get this blended into that? But yeah, but it's all part of the process. All part of the process. Also, let me show my screen. Beep. Bop. This is a, let's do the final render. It's a cool model I found on here. Oh my God. Yeah, a uh, bit insane, right? A bit insane. <laughs> um, but like, look how much detail they got on this low poly model, right? Uh, like it looks amazing. But then when you check out the, the wire, ugh, <clears throat> sorry, one second. Grain of rice just went down my throat. Whoa. Um, if you look at the, uh, <clears throat> the, the actual low poly model, like look at how it's broken up into these shapes. And that's basically, you, you can tell what they did to create this, right? They just did that decimate that I did as my first step, decimate all, and then they put it together. So it's like chaos geometry. They did not retopologize this. And if you look, um, first of all, they made it with photogrammetry which is something I'll get into in a second, but they say the UV work is a nightmare. Feel happy it is finally finished. Uh, it was a nightmare because it was all triangles. Like this is impossible to get like easy selections on edges and edge loops to like really cut out the, the different planes that you would fold, you know? Like it, so yeah, this had to be a nightmare, but like the end result is amazing though. So it looks awesome. Um, but yeah, they say that they use photogrammetry for this. For those of you that don't know, photogrammetry is basically taking a bunch of pictures. Uh, in this case, this person even says they use 334 photos of something in real life. So they found this, uh, this dragon column in real life, took a bunch of pictures of it. And then they sent all those pictures to the computer and then it kind of like did its magic and made the 3D model for this guy. So. Yeah, so there's there definitely there's more more than just the ways that I'm showing in class the model. Um, they use photogrammetry a lot for like clothing, like shoes. A lot of shoes I've seen made uh, in like like hats and stuff. I've seen them those uh, be used for like online advertisements and stuff made from photogrammetry. But yeah. But this does go to show the power of the normal map, right? Because this is what it looks like with just the normal map. This is the normal map itself. It looks like chaos, you know, but all that baked data from that high poly photogrammetry model just got applied to this low, low poly uh, dragon, dragon column. But I mean, this is pretty high poly. Like, this, is, this is a higher poly than we're going to deal with, you know? So yeah, don't be... Don't be freaked out by it, but it's just cool to see what people are making out there. But yeah, I'll just be sticking around for questions. I'll be here probably until like 9, 9, 15. Maybe later if people are still asking questions. Like I, I stick around until like 10 sometimes if people are really curious about something. So have you, I have, oh, oh okay. just a quick one for sorry. Are you, have you finished recording by the way, Mike? You just want to stop here and then just take questions? That way your upload won't be as horrendous? That's what I was, yeah, the upload was going to be bad uh -huh. if, if I keep recording, but do you, do you guys want my responses to questions to be recorded as well? I don't mind either way. I'm mostly watching it though for your tutorials. So unless your questions cover something you didn't cover in a tutorial. Which, yeah, that's the thing about questions yeah. sometimes. Sometimes it it's like a problem that you might run into as well. Yeah. So some... I'll just keep recording then. It'll be it'll be awful 
for my hard drive, but you know, and it'll take like a couple hours to convert, but it's fine. <laughs> so it's just, I can hear you dying a little, but okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I have no, I have no qualms with it. I, I just want to do what's best for the class, you know. Is there something okay. you have to say, Mike? All right. Sorry, Veronica, go ahead. Um, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> oh, uh, you can also, uh, can't you turn it on and off to like, let's say I ask a question that we've already gone over and then somebody else asks a question nobody's gone over so then you can yeah. press record hey. true, true but like if if you run into the same issue or something and then you're like man how did we fix that before then it's 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 still good to have something in there you know mike lost his soul a long time ago oh my god i hope not <laughs> my god so I, i'm just gonna let it rock i'm gonna let it rock y'all unless oh, there's yeah. like a, a a long time of just silence then i'll pause or something you know right um, so I would like for you to, if ZBrush wasn't being so weird and stretchy, um, to look at my, um, yeah. my lines to see if I have too many or what's going on with that. It's being really weird, so I'm just going to close ZBrush and reopen it real quick. Yeah, I was going to so say, to uh, feel free to send something over in, um, in like the art sharing channel or something, you know? Okay, should I put my file in the art sharing channel? Oh no, that, that it'd probably be too big. Okay. Um, I, if, like, like a, not, a uh -huh. screenshot would be good though, if you could do a okay. screenshot. I'm not sure how to do that on a Mac because I'm still very um, slow to technology. Uh, I believe Mac is a uh, Apple F three guys. F I'm at Apple three or Apple four? Is that command? Command probably yeah that so there's a there's a targeted screenshot you can do which is the four and then the three takes like a picture of the whole screenshot yeah okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember I don't work on the Mac anymore but I, I do remember it's very easy to screenshot Macs you sack the Mac <laughs> well I mean PC is cheaper <laughs> and you can build your own so mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have this computer since 2015. That's so it's so good. They make good computers. It's just like I don't like their policy of like you can't really touch it or it breaks the warranty and then only Genius yeah. Bar can fix it. It's That's just, so lame. That's it's just really so bizarre. Lame. They make good stuff. Capitalism. Yeah. Good products. Though. Capitalism. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine like <sighs> I was going to <laughs> I was going to say a Mac with like RGB lights in it, but you can't do that because like they're not, you don't get a Mac in a tower. They're usually all mm -hmm. just like in a little box well, where you they, can't see anything. They do sell the tower, but it's like- Or a cheese grater. Yeah, cheese grater <laughs> if you want to spend 5K. Yeah. <laughs> cheese grater. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Very expensive cheese grater, yeah. So I have one of those. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm going to mute Veronica for a second there while we uh, recover. <laughs> oh, man, that was something. I apologize. I apologize, guys. Okay, I muted. Um, may I please share my screen? Yeah. Let me, okay. uh, let me allow that. Also, I need That's to stop my right. share. Let me. There you go. And you should be good to go. Awesome. Um, yeah, that one. Let's do that. Okay. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. And are you seeing ZBrush or are you seeing Zoom? ZBrush. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, here are my lines. It's going to even take a second for it to even show you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's too dense. That's what I thought. <laughs> too dense, yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely run, yeah, yeah, go, well, is this saved out so we can, like, mess with it in case we need to? Yes. Okay. I, I saved it before I closed, and then I'm reopening this one, so this is new. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so go to geometry. Okay. And then... Z remesher, yeah. Z remesher, okay. And then, um... I click off same, like click, click, see how same is highlighted? Yeah. And then do target polygons count. Drag that down to like, mm, do like three. 
327. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. And then um, <clears throat> let's, let, yeah, just press Z measure right now. Okay. So I want to know what exactly this is doing. I might have, um, like, my brain might have just clouded out what we we talked about with Zoom measure. Mm -hmm. This is just kind of helping everything kind of coincide with you. Yeah. Sorry. This okay. is basically it's going through every single vertex in the model, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like analyzing those. It's finding out how your model curves in the scene. Like it's, it's, it's analyzing the curves of the model. And then it's basically doing the retop, the retopologizing for us. It's doing all that for us. So instead of us going in and quad drawing every single individual point exactly where we want it, mm -hmm. ZBrush kind of does its own thing. It's like, okay, I'll see, uh, I'll see what I can do for you, you know? Okay, awesome. And then um, one thing that kind of um, worried me was the fact that I tried to put hair and mm -hmm. the, I put an ellipse or at least a, a sphere on top of the head, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to move it, lower it, and do all those kind of like Maya moves, mm -hmm. it kind of like stretched and like, I don't know, it pulled apart. It didn't turn into two different spheres. It kind of turned into like a combination of two spheres. My mouth is gone. Yeah, the mouth is gone, yeah. Man, the face so, was so beautiful back then. It, it, it really was. It really was. Um, so you could, um, this character is going to wear clothes, right? Yeah, I'm just going to put a simple dress on her and I wanted to give her a cowboy hat and a cowboy cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. but... Yes. So do me a favor uh -huh. and export out this file, right? So yeah, go up to export, boom, OBJ, and then put that into the Discord somewhere. So I'll show you something that would be pretty easy to. Uh, I can't spell. To I do for this. That's fine. Let's just leave it like that. We're not grading you on uh, spelling in this class. Y'all better not. <laughs> Y'all better not. All right. All right, so I'm putting it in the art sharing channel. Fantastic. Momento, por favor. I can speak perfect, perfect Spanish, but it's so much fun to speak in an accent like that. <laughs> um, now I just have to find it. One second. Yeah. There you are. Keely, that's looking amazing. Good stuff, Keely. All right, so I'm downloading that. Download the F out of it, man. Hell Do yeah. I stop sharing my screen? Uh, if you want, yeah, yeah. That way you could watch mine, actually. Yeah, because I don't think you can watch and share at the same time. I wish you could. It'd be so sick if we could just all share what we were doing. <laughs> so it's like everyone could like see like everyone's progress. I feel like it'd be like sitting in like a library for sculpting and stuff, you know? Isn't there an option to do multiple share or is that there is, but like if you're sharing, I notice like at least I can't I can't watch other people's shares if I'm sharing at the same time. Oh, I see, I see. So it's like it limits it and it's kind of lame. Man, Discord can do that. Right. That's why I'm so down to like if the if the if they would like pay for a Discord Nitro or whatever, that'd be so sick. Cause then you could like post like high uh like large files in the Discord too. So I'm gonna import your object. Mm -hmm. That is so funny. Can you imagine if you could get school to pay for Discord Nitro? <laughs> right, that'd be hilarious. But we need it. I tried convincing. Well, no, I, it didn't take very often, but you guys remember about the whole faux pas mine server, right? About yeah it got brought up with the faculty and they're like oh discord it's dangerous i'm like what are you guys talking about it's the <laughs> devil's work yeah and it, well it's, it's not it's, 4chan it's not we well, need custom emoji it was not vetted by the school that's just their main complaint so we're technically not supposed to use it but it's not stopping students from making it so you know um but yeah anyway 
That's the Scotria. <laughs> so we have this character, right? And the topology is like, you know, it's working. It's working for us. Uh, but mm -hmm. we could just kind of model some basic stuff on the character uh, in here with our with our uh, trusty Maya tools, you know. Um, so if I do surface slide, you, see, you said there was going to be a dress on this character, right? Yeah. So I had her in like a V-neck slip, and it was going to have like little like tassels at the bottom, but you know we went over that, and that's not going to happen this semester or yeah this year. So. <laughs> or this year maybe this year i have hope for the year you know? coming soon in five years yeah. make like we might be able to do something like this though you know where like we start kind of like just we'll, we'll just basically extrude we'll use our, our basic maya tools to sort of handle the dress Let's get, let's get this. There we go. All right. And then like, we can just, it's like this. Wow. So this is potentially what we can do. Cause like the, the base of this model is pretty strong. Like the, the, uh, the anatomy and stuff is, is in, in its spot. Thank you. But we could just kind of cheat. Don't tell anyone that we're cheating. Um, <gasps> we're going oh to God. just I extrude. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, here we go. And no one will know the difference right here. And then control E for extrude. Beep. And ideally you'd like to have this be one clean, like across, like it is, that's why I recommend the, uh, the Z remesher guides because you could really get like loops where you want them. Uh, but then, yeah, so you have that, it's like fake dress basically. Uh, if we go into soften edge and you could even go as far as to Kind of select these too. Like this might work. I don't know if this will work, but because we're definitely cheating a lot here. Yeah, and then like extrude this inward. Oops, let me turn off. It's like my eyeliner in high school. <laughs> some good lore. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so like you could you could model some aspects of this in Maya still. Is what I'm trying to get at. Um, but if you, I, I recommend doing another Z remesh, like I control Z. Oh wait, your, yours is already gone, but I would control Z before like this file, you know, and then really set in those guides for, for each of those loops. So like, say you want, you wanted that face, right? That was a good face. You spent a lot of time on it. Um, definitely mark the eye with the Z remesh guide. Remember that's the last brush on the list. Mark the mouth, like do do the top and the bottom lip, because it should it should follow this topology. Right. Uh, where is it? Oh my god! Face topology. Yeah, just get these loops in there, right? get all those loops um try not to go past the the middle line because it, it gets it gets wacky if you do that sometimes it can error out after you spent like a while doing your zbrush uh zebra measure guides and then also in when you're z remeshing uh you could go up in your target poly count you could go up a little bit um, I wouldn't do beyond five though, because if, you, if you're intending on animating this, um, it's going to be pretty difficult 
to paint the skin weights for something that's like more dense than this. Because basically there's another step further in the course where you have to go over every single vert. And um, yeah, it can be it can be very time consuming there. Uh, but yeah, and then, so let's go back into ZBrush. And oh, ZBrush is trying its best to crash. It's probably trying to save. I should probably just turn off auto saving when I'm teaching, but uh, yeah, make sure your target poly count. 3K didn't work very well for us. Try like five or six. And then, uh, yeah, Z remesh that. Make sure you're, uh, I'm gonna press escape key to port. I wanna do curve strength up to like 95 though. That way it's really gonna abide to where I laid out these Z remesher guides. It's gonna really pay attention to where we put them. What kind of file are we saving for importing into Maya? A .obj or an FBX will work. But yeah, so this is now Z remeshed um, by leaving it um, undynameshed. Like if we don't dynamesh it together, it does retain the shape of like these shells pretty well. Like see this, like the, the cuff is pretty, pretty well um, represented. The eyes are kind of messed up. We'd have to redo those eyes. That's pretty simple. You just make another sphere in Maya. Um, and the collar is a little bit wacky too, but like it retains the shape better. However, you also have way more polys in your scene, 15K. Uh, it's also going to be hard to, um, it's going to be hard to, to, it only let me choose ZPR. Uh, Tammy, go up to, with, with your, with your object selected that you're going to export. Selected? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sub, in your sub tools. So if you, you might have merged it all together and you only have one sub tool. I don't know exactly what your files look like, but. Uh, the button you're looking for is export up here in the tool menu. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you were going to like file save as or something maybe or, or something over there, but yeah. Yeah, I would save OT sub tool as different file. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you could work, I, I feel like it might be faster for you guys to work with it all merged, but um, just know that in if you're working on like a, a project and you're going to bake maps for it, then it's, it's best to keep them kind of separate because uh, you can get cleaner bakes that way. So it's okay for this project to make mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you can just do merge visible, this little button down here. And that will merge every visible sub tool. Hey, Mike, I have a question about the, um, what is it called? The, uh, like trim tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I used it twice successfully to cut some gaps out of some fingers and toes. Yeah. And I'm continuing to try and use it. And, and it's just not working. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh -oh. tools are undependable. They, 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 sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And I think it has to do with the density of the mesh. Cool. Like it, if you're if you're trying to like separate out really close fingers, like I think if you don't have a thick enough sort of selection in there, it just is not going to work very well. So yeah, it's not it's not the the cure all. It's it's a really good tool, but but yeah. I like it. It works so well those two times. Right, it works like a phenomenally sometimes. And you're like, oh hell yeah! And other times it just kills itself. And you're like, Dude, why, why, like, why isn't it doing it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come mm -hmm. on, guys. Okay. Is there is there an easy way to mirror just a portion of a mesh? Because this one foot is really good. 
Mm -hmm. And <laughs> apparently we can't cut anything else out with this tool right now because the stars aren't right. Mm -hmm. There is a way, yeah. I'm worried for it though. Because if we, the, the workflow would be cut off the legs. Okay. And then delete the leg that's not working. And then mirror the one that is, and then dynamesh them then back together. on re Reattach them. Yeah. During the reattachment process, I feel like something might get lost on, especially in that like plumage area, you know? Yeah. Because we're going to have to dynamesh it. Hmm. Um, but I think it's, it, it might be worth a gamble. You know, let me let me see if I can make this work. Maybe, Maybe. save a version before you do that. Keely. Oh, yeah, one hundred percent. If you guys haven't haven't uh, gathered already, when we're doing some risky stuff, please save before. Please. Experimental uh, surgery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Mike. Whenever possible, could you help me the hair question in Discord? Oh, let me see. What? Mm -hmm. Face of the hair molded onto my model. Give it texture with clay buildup. How would you recommend I approach this? Man? Yeah, import spheres and stretch them. I would probably extract first, Rodney. I would do an extraction, probably. So let me, let me do this on my side. Let me move my plate over to the, no, I'll just put it on my lap, whatever. Um, so if I was gonna give this rat that haircut, I would start masking off. Um, I'm not masking anything, apparently. Weird. One second. Oh my God, there we go. One second. The ZBrush is dying over here. Hmm. So I'd first get the a little bit of masking in there, and then, um, go. then I would extract. Oh no, this is going very slow. I might have to restart the ZBrush. Uh, that looks fine to me. And accept. And then, oh damn, back's a little bit messed up. Uh, that's fine, I'll just leave it like that. So then first step, I'm gonna Z remesh half. I'm gonna bring it down super low. We're talking super low over here. And I, I'm just gonna smooth these things and then Z remesh again. And we have this now, so. With these side things, I would first start trying to uh, get it into uh, position generally. And probably not the best skull for this sort of haircut, you know, but what we got. Um, yeah, because these ears are blocking a lot of stuff, but uh, it's basically just using Z remesh and keeping it nice and easy to deal with. I'm just using 
Like, look how low this Z remesh is staying, you know. I, this, is, this is how we should always be working with Z remeshes. Not, not anything too crazy, you know. Let's do that. right here. So you can see how I'm kind of starting to craft that. Uh, and wherever, wherever things get too stretched out like this, just feel free to Z remesh. If it, like, this might be a little bit not dense enough. So I might do double and go up in size or up in density here, see that? Um, and yeah, so now we have something that's kind of in the shape that we want. Uh, and at this point, you gave him He-Man hair. Hell yeah, I did. <laughs> and I need to pull this back as well. Um, but yeah, something to keep in mind is that if you're planning on animating this character, this this hair, if you like model it kind of super low and it's like flowing over the shoulders, uh, if that head rotates and we don't do anything about like those hair strands to animate them, they're just going to clip straight through the, the collarbone and stuff. So be mindful of that. You might want to decrease the length of the hair or something to compensate for that. Um, but yeah, so if we so you mesh this, amazing. And then we can, at this point, when you have like the general shape, uh, it kind of sucks that you're dealing with hair. And I, it looks like the part is on one side. Yeah, so then we unfortunately have to turn off symmetry. So it's gonna make our time longer. Uh, so I'm gonna use damn standard for that. I'm gonna turn off polyline so we can just focus on the appeal of the hair. Oh, what the hell? go. So I'm just pinching in with that damn standard. And kind of starting to define some different oh, that's weird. Hold on. Starting to define different sort of planes in here. We're building that up. Um, do you mind if I restart ZBrush real quick? It's kind of running really weird right now. I think I get the gist of it. Um, okay, cool. So I get it. So then I would just extract the same way I would do with clo clothing, right? Yep, same way. Same way as clothing. Um, the only difference is that like you'll you'll get it down into this like basic shape. And then you'll do the classic, uh, just divide the mesh if you need more detail. See here, okay. it's like a little bit up now. I can kind of mm -hmm. get more detail in there. Uh, be careful with this and make sure you're always swapping between the sub div levels, you know, whenever, you, whenever you're dividing, we keep dividing mm -hmm. this. So you get really clean results in here, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's gonna take take a little bit of time. But yeah, that's pretty much wow. it. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, no looking problem. good. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he's gonna be dazzling people. Um, that's so weird though. Let me uh, let me restart the ZBrush. It's kind of behaving strangely. Oh no, is he trying to save as well? ZBrush, no. Mike, can you take a look at my model? Is the poly too high to import? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me see. Do you did you want to screen share it with us or screenshot it with the poly frame or, or what? What's going on?
uh, what would I do to cut my model off at the waist, even though I merged them all? Uh, yeah, let, let me, uh, I was gonna say, let me look at Matt's stuff, but I, I'm not sure if he's still there or not. Um, yeah, Matt, let us know if you wanted to screen share or not, or, or if you're just gonna send us a screenshot in uh, Discord or something. As for Kendall's question, I'll show you a nifty tool uh, that Keely was talking about earlier called the trim tool. You cut your model off at the waist tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fun when it works. Sounds mm. a helpful tool. <laughs> That's actually what it says when you hold control and hover over it. That's the tool tip. A helpful tool. <laughs> No, right. a tool to cut your model off at the waist. Ah, I see. A little bit more brutal. Sorry, this rat project's taking forever to load up. Oh, I, I just found the tool and I figured it out. There you go. Thank you. No problem. Hey Mike, is there any way to remove steps from my uh, docu from undo steps from my document? I closed the brush and I'm open and opened it again, and it says that when it's opening my file, it's retrieving two thousand undo steps, and I don't need that many. And it's I think it's making my file like pretty pretty massive, right? Heavy. Yeah, because look at mine. Mine's taking forever to open right now. I know it um, takes like it, it takes like two minutes to save it. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about file size a little bit. One one second, it's it's going to be doing this. I I need to wait for this to to load up. Um, I'm Same. Stop, stop screen share just in the meantime. Recording. There we go. So um, if you'll notice, my file size is 400 megs. Pretty big. Pretty big file size, kind of annoying to, to deal with. Uh, probably the fastest way to do this is to go to subtool, uh, merge visible. We're gonna merge all visible tools in the scene. This will get rid of everything, by the way. So make sure make sure you're you're okay with that. Um, so merge visible, boom, and then that's gonna make a uh, it's gonna make a new merged tool over here. Uh, wait, I did, let's see. Cause I have like a bunch of these cause I've been showing this to, to people. Merge visible, there we go, right here. So if we click on this one now, you'll see that in here we have just an empty scene, right? Uh, with just the, the only the sub tools that we want. So it's just this rat. And then if we save as in the tool menu, not file save as, if you do tool save as, we're gonna save out as ZTL. And I got a sculpt rat high, let's do, let's do rat fresh scene, I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna save that out. And then I'm going to go to document or wait, I'm going to go to, uh, man, because I can't open that tool directly. Um, basically, you're just going to be working on the ZTL. Because uh, that's going to save there. So if you do ZPR, it's going to save that too. Um, how do I get around this? Hmm. You could always go to your light box again. Mm -hmm. And just click on one of these like default projects. Like this one's just nothing in here. It's a default ZPR in there. And it has like just that one Dynamesh sphere, right? Uh, so if you load tool at the top right here, you can load that rat fresh scene. Boom, there you go. So now that this is fresh rat. If you look at my <laughs> file size, uh, so I, I was at 400 megs. Now I'm at 12 megs. Is there any, wow. So there, yeah. 
is there any way to do that and still keep your separate sub tools? Right. So now we have to do split. So if we split, uh, I like to do split uh, by groups or split to similar parts based on like what's going on in the model. Um, in here, I would do groups split and say OK, and boom, there you go. How does it know? Uh, because the groups were set up for that. Um, it also kind of messes with some things that you extracted. So you might have to go in um, and do, wait, let's see, can't undo that. Let's do, I'm just going to do merge down so I don't have to go through a bunch of different things now. All those unundoable operations, like give me the heebie-jeebies. Right, but just just make sure that you know that merge and split are like the exact opposites, you know? So like they, uh, they're, they're very similar, but like they're just like two sides of the same coin, you know? Um, I'm just gonna open up that, I'm just gonna load that tool again. Uh, sorry about this. Another tool, rat for a scene. There we go. Let's do split, split to similar parts then. Let's try that. And this is looking this is looking better because the other one, it was splitting up like my collar into three different sub tools because they had, mm -hmm. had three different uh, polygroups on it. Um, but yeah, so this one, it maintains all of those on there. So yeah. Hmm. Let's let's do file save as to see what size this is. Rat sculpt ten low size. Saving file in progress. Because it might not actually save a bunch of space on ZPR, but the ZTL, if you're if you're working off that, then that's like way lower, way way more light. Okay. So let's see. I just found an option in preferences to make my undo history less than um, less than ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to dial that back to call it one hundred. There's also a way to just straight up delete history as well. Um, let me see. Where is that in here? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's under edit. And then tool, delete older, undo history, or delete undo history. Both of those will work. You have to do it on a per tool basis, though. So you have to like click on each different sub tool and then delete the history. Yeah, because it stores the, the sub tool history to that sub tool. Yeah, only one of these has uh, anything. I'm not too worried about the rest of them. Hell yeah. Also, okay. Matt, I never got any. Did, did you send the uh, thing? What was that? Matt, it sounds like you're talking right now, but I can't really understand it. You can just type if uh, your mic is all messed up or something. Can you hear me now? Sorry, my PC mic's like, no, nah, it's all good. Can we send a CPR? You can send me uh, just a screen. Yeah, just screen share would be fine. That'd be that'd be fine. Uh, progress before before hair. Let's go. Oh wow, Rodney's booking it. Stuff, Rodney. All right, let me stop my share so I can watch yours. There we go. All right. I, I can't understand anything that you just said. <laughs> I, just heard, I think he said it was a little bit hard to communicate or something like that. 
it's a little bit hard to communicate. True, true. Uh, I mean, Matt, you could try like Discord audio, you know, join the voice chat there and see if it, if it you know, it it hopefully, but. You could hop into Discord on your phone, maybe, and then I could listen to you there in like one of the audio channels. Oh, you can uh, okay, yeah. So, and Discord actually works. Oh yeah, what's up? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> But yeah, so what what you got? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I think that might be a model underneath the other model. Mm. Yeah, it looks like there's two uh, models underneath each other right there. Um, hmm. Well, I, I can't really see your sub tools right now. Let's uh, click on that. Yeah, click on that one. Yeah. Turn turn off the visibility of that that bottom human one. Uh, yeah, like the go up again, uh, and then turn off the eyeball next to like go go down to. Yeah, there you go, yeah, there you go. And then it looks like you have a mask on that on that arm right there. So if you just uh, control drag, yeah, that also works, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think it might be, um, you can always like alt left click in the viewport and it'll select, it'll like automatically move you over to that sub tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be alt and then pen down. You'll, you'll just like tap it with the pen. Uh, you just alt and then tap on whatever you're like wondering which which sub tool it is, and then it'll select that sub tool in your uh, in your sub tool menu. Also, Matt, have you seen how your like sub tool? menu on the right side is like weirdly long. Can you um, try like left click dragging in there to kind of like pull that whole menu down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, left click drag down. Mm 
I don't see your cursor moving at all anymore. I think your video might have gotten weird somehow. It looks like a screen is frozen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just frozen on my side. I was like, I'm not sure if I'm the only one seeing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So go a little bit to the left of that. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, you're going to left click drag down to left of that orange. Yeah, yeah. See that? There you go. Also, you see at the top of that subtool menu where it says visible count. Drag that bar down, like to the left. Drag that little orange bar. Yeah. There you go. You can have it a little bit more than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now you can just viz on and off those different subtools to see like what what it's what. Yeah. So that's another subtool underneath that other object, uh, that other model. Yeah. And then drag that orange bar up. Yeah. So, because you were only seeing two. Yeah, yeah. And then drag that other orange bar, like the one on the left. Yeah, drag that upward. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's in the scene. It's just that you have two boots right on top of each other. So I'm pretty sure you can delete that one, that extract 47. I can go down. Uh, no, go a, like, like drag up in that menu or scroll down, like either one. Yeah, like, so, ah, man, it's kind of hard to describe. Uh, so let me share my screen for you. There we go. So see how I can just left click in here and drag the menu. What we're looking for is this delete button right there. And that's like in the sub tool menu. So you just have to uh, select the, exactly, yeah. Select the boots right there and then go down to delete and then it will delete that sub tool. Hmm. Okay. Now uh, you can just open up the pro uh, the file again. Mm -hmm. File open. No file open. Yeah. I wouldn't say because we we just deleted that that boot. Uh, 
open your most recent one, the one right, right, right before we started doing stuff. You go to your, all right, go to your light box. And then recent, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it'll, it should include quick saves in here, but yeah, click on the quick save. Uh, click that, uh, oh wait, I think it's loading now. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sweet. That's, that's why I'd say don't worry about the bottom half, you know, just only, only mess with like the shoulders and above. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it usually takes a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can always save out a CTL like we did earlier. And those are usually really small. Hmm, Maya crashes whenever you click live surface. Tammy, did you? Um, did you? One second, let me. I'm going to leave the Discord call for a second. Well, I'll just deafen in there. Um, Tammy, did you uh, decimate the model? Did you, did you use the decimation plugin? No. It was um let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh it was this Z plugin, decimation master. Uh it basically crunched down the model into like three hundred thousand points or something. Something like that. Or it was like fifty thousand or something. Something a lot more, it, it, your, your model might be too high res to be used with what? live surface. Let me, let me check.
where, where did you find, find it? The OZ plugin? Mm-hmm. And then Destination Master. Mm-hmm. And then you just click pre-process all. And then it's going to think for a while. And then you do decimate all. And I, I like to leave it at 20%. That's usually a pretty good value. So I click on pre-process O mm -hmm. and then estimate O. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna think for a while for a while for that. It's gotta do a lot of calculations. And then you do decimate all. Is it cannot destiny? Some sub tools are not pre computed. Mm -hmm. mm, so, are, are you sure you put uh, clicked pre process all and let that finish? Yeah. That's weird because that's the that's the error that it throws up when you don't pre process all. Hmm. What does what's the error say specifically? Um, hold on. They cannot estimate some sub tools are not pre computed. Click on pre process require sub tools to pre compute destination for those sub tools. Hmm. No, I, yeah, that's weird. Like, so try clicking pre process all again. Then. Yeah, I did like a couple times, and then this box keep. Uh, so, all right, so I'm going to do it on my end, if you're watching. So, oops, let's close this, there you go. And then as you plug in, I'm going to pre-process all. And watch, it's going through every single subtool. So you have to give it time. And it's analyzing. And then it says computing. Online because it done very quick. Yeah. Oh, it did it like really, really fast. Yeah. So mine took about twenty seconds. So that's not too bad. Like did did yours ever show this operation completed? Yeah, I, I think it did. Hold on, let me do it again. Hmm. Yeah, is it operation completed? completed and it took like two seconds oh that's weird okay hmm one second let me look this up never, never run into this problem before Well, uh, Tammy, could you try this? Go to um, select like the, the body or something. Like I'll just do the rat body right here. And go to same, same plugin as before. And instead do pre-process current. Okay. And it's gonna, it's gonna do the same thing on my end. And then 
decimate current. So it's going to only do that, that current subtool you have. See if that works. Mm, I think work is an operation complete. So I would do the same thing for other sub tools too. All the other ones. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a way slower and annoying, but like at least it works. Okay. And yeah. after this, export it into Maya and try again. Exactly. Yeah. Because I think it might have just been too heavy for Maya to uh, yeah. have that be a live surface to draw on. Yeah. A little bit of a pain, I know, but, uh, you know, that's how, uh, that's how a lot of things in, in uh, the art world can be. But yeah, let me know if it works. I would say instead of going through this for every single thing, maybe just try exporting that sub tool that got decimated only and see if you can live draw on that in Maya rather than going for every single thing right now, you know? Yeah, because I, I just like merge all the coil thing together. Mm -hmm. like, so, so should I like explore the body, only body or should I? Like, yeah, I'd say, I'd say ju just the body that you decimated. Just okay. the body that you decimated, yeah. And then th that'll let us know if it's like a problem with the poly count or if it's a, some other problem potentially. Okay. Mm. Yeah, let me know how that goes. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna go hop back over to Matt. Matt has the model up. So let's see what we got going on over here. I'm going to stop sharing on my end. There you go. All right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Uh, oh, let me let me undeafen in Discord so I can hear you again. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's minimize that. Uh, yeah. It looks like you have the the pants. Right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What do you? What are you uh, about, about to hop into? Yeah. 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 Nice, I like it. Uh, mm, mm -hmm. So, uh, first step is uh, in the subtool menu. Uh, click append. So, so down, down in the subtool menu, yeah. And then it's that append button. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, you can just see it in that list right there that popped up. So click append and then right there. <laughs> a little bit big, a little bit big, you know. Yeah, scale it, all that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You have to you have to click the hand. Yeah, and that. So yeah, it's always weird how when you append something, it doesn't automatically select it. It's like why. Why would they do this? Um, I also noticed that it's like inside out. Uh, to fix that, uh, so drag all the way down in your menus. So, so you can get the very bottom. You're looking for display properties right there, and then click flip. There you go.
But yeah, you could just dynamesh it together to the other stuff. It'll just take a little bit of, a little bit of doing. But yeah, we're always down for a Frankenstein, you know. Can I be next in the question queue? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, too big. It. How good's your PC? Pretty decent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, how do you find it slowing down when you use ZBrush and stuff or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, I, I think you, you're, you're still good. Um, you'll just have to do that decimation thing first. That's always just good practice in general. Um, but yeah, and I, I have a separate video on uh, YouTube for that, I believe, the whole decimation and retopology process. So if you want to check that out only, then go for it. Yeah. Keep it up, my dude. Keep it up. All right, now, Keely was next in the question queue. Okay. Um, At least I think you were. I, that sounds right. I think so. Tammy was running into some issues, but hopefully they got resolved. But, but yeah, so what's up, Keely? Um, when I masked out the shirt, I and extracted it, I think I hit or um, like my mask wasn't all that clean. So I got like a couple little floaty pieces mm -hmm. that are the same width as the shirt. Mm -hmm. Is there any easy way to delete these? I've been doing a combination of um, just standard alt maximum intensity and just trying to like erase them out of existence but i still i still have these tiny baby pieces that like just like the the smallest bits that won't go away um with that technique yeah let me see I there's a few there's a few ways work. that i can think about it uh, or that that i can think of approaching this so if i extract i'm just going to make a, a messy extraction uh, you're not sharing your screen. Yeah, I wanted you to if, uh, okay. kind of uh, learn through feeling uh, for this round. So uh, <laughs> no one's like, let, me, let me share my screen. Here we go. I'll absorb the vibes. Just visualize yeah. it in your head, Keely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to. So this okay. is like my mask, and then I'm going to make some little straggler bits. Oops. A couple little whoopsies and then extract and accept and ah it's terrible oh no so i don't think we can do much about these ones right here besides just smoothing them and then z yeah. uh but these ones right here um we can potentially um do something called split and then split to parts and watch what happens with the sub tool here. Boom. This is not an undoable operation. Ah, we're gonna do it anyways. So Jeez. now that that extra little free floating chunk got split into a different sub tool. Oh, and you can just delete it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Let's see how that works. It, my, it blows my mind. Oh, sorry. It works. Hell yeah. I was, sorry, that was for Tammy's problem. Nice. You're good. Nice, Tammy. Uh, Mike? Yeah. I have a question. So what's one way I could go about the hands that are not realistic? Not realistic, yeah, true. Because you have cartoony hands, right? A, a very cartoony character. That would be nightmare fuel. Oh, yeah, sure. a little bit, a little bit. Um, I would say, honestly, you're probably not going to like my solution, but I think it's 
it's the best solution. And it's the one that I've seen every character artist do. Um, and let me let me butcher my model real quick for you. <laughs> nice pupper in the background. Probably barking at a wall. He can't see much anymore. Oh no. He, he's pupper, 15. No. He old man. Yeah, he old man. He very old. So I have no hand now. Ah. Um I would I would just um all right, so I usually okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, so I would just do the classic insert mesh primitives. Uh, let me move my plate. Let me, so I can use my tablet. Oh, whoops. So here we go. And then move topological. And like I said, it's probably not going to be your favorite solution, but you know. This is, this is what we do. We usually just craft it from a bunch of primitives. So there we go. It's like the palm. <laughs> and then uh, I would feel free to split this off. Um, so I can just do split unmasked points. So now I have this separate one, just so I can see it against the uh, the rest of it pretty easily. Then I'm gonna go back into my insert mesh primitives. Uh, I find cartoony hands frequently have, um, instead of like the four fingers, they usually just have three. So I'm gonna do something like that. And... Kind of lost you for a good minute. It's like robot frozen. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. How far back? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm done. Right this. After, I think right after you finish explaining the palm. Mm, okay. Okay. So basically, I just broke off that palm into another sub tool. You know, uh, so you can see everything that I've done. Do so I made the palm, right? And it was it was part of this object, but I kind of like to mess with the hand as its own thing, you know, its own sub tool. So uh, I split that off with split unmasked points after I used the the thing. I'll, I'll just I'll just walk through it again. Um, here we go. I'm just gonna delete this. Eep. Let's go into IMM primitives. Here we go. This is my palm. And then I can immediately do the split unmasked points right there. Oh, whoops. Wait one second. go. So you have that palm shape. Um, actually, let me get this. Is, mm, let me delete this actually. Groups split. Ah, there we go. So basically, I split that off into a separate sub tool. Now you see this. So if I click on here, you can see it's a separate sub tool in that list. And it's just the same, same process that we use to make the, the general forms of the character. I'm just using insert mesh primitives and then making a sphere and then moving the different pieces. You can get, you can get pretty detailed with this. Like I, I see a lot of character artists um, use uh, like make an individual insert mesh for each digit. So you can do that if you want. So you go in here, make the next section of that finger. Drag that in. And 
and let go of that. You can start kind of moving these forms around. Does that make sense, Rachel? Just kind of going one piece at a time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's not it's not like the fastest, but I mean, most you get the most control this way. And uh, you can make some some clean hand shapes. It's not again, yeah, it's not super fast or anything, but this is this is the way as the Mandalorian would say.
Yeah, Tammy, that sounds fine. Yeah, let me uh, let me check out what's going on. Okay. Um, can you see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it looks correct. It looks what? It looks correct. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would also get the um, the um, sort of mouth outlined as well. Okay. And um, yeah, same with the nose. So we're supposed to have whole thing mm -hmm. done with this on type was it typology? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, done with the retopology by by next class. Um, you could go in and just. Z remesh some spots like the bow. If you can like Z remesh that down really low, and then export that into Maya and use that as well. You know, um, sure. For that little that little like frill right there. Um, yeah, I think that might be. Could you could you like rotate around that for a little bit? Let me let me see what that looks like. Uh, okay. Okay. Hmm. So that's honestly kind of a complex shape, right? Uh, maybe maybe try Z remeshing that one too, uh, and then we'll 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 try to cut a seam down because ba basically what I'm worried about is if we Z remesh everything, it's going to be like difficult to to deal with when we UV it. Um, but I think yeah, I think the body you can do in Maya like this, and then stuff like the that little frilly part that that can be done in uh in uh z brush with z remesh i think that'd be good what about this group can i should i do it in maya mm -hmm. yeah yeah that looks pretty that looks pretty simple enough to to okay. read apologize yeah so the only thing i need to do z remesh in z brush is the o and the the bow, yeah, and that maybe even maybe the hair as well. Um, also, something to note: so that your your skirt has like that that front piece of fabric is like it's kind of a separate object. So I would um, I would have that be separate when I'm trying to uh, retopologize it, you know, and I would just retopologize it as one one piece, you know, uh, for that skirt. So when I retypologize this, shall I um, have everything separated? Mm, and no, I, I would keep. I would keep most of it. I would keep. I would go through the body, mm -hmm. and the and um, I would do yeah. I would do the head down to the neck because that's going to disappear behind the frill, right? And then mm -hmm. I would do the body for the rest of it as as one piece, and then I would. Um, also do her top on that same object as the body right and mm -hmm. the then i would have the skirt be separate objects in there okay yeah make sense yeah yeah all right fantastic i look forward to it uh mike i have a question yeah what's up um so when we when we export um, our model from ZBrush into Maya, we're we're exporting it in parts, right? Um, you can export it as one or in parts. I do in parts because like sometimes it's easier to retopologize certain things when they're split apart. But uh, for you guys, I'd say keep them keep them as as one for now. You know. Okay. Um. Then my I guess my question with that is. Is there a way to combine um, some of these sub tools together? Like, let's say I have pieces of a dress. Can I can mm -hmm. I um, put them together into one whole dress and yeah. just have that be one part of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to to combine those together, uh, feel free. If it seems like it's going to be easier to do that way, um, you can just go to your your menu, and if you look at like say say I wanted these cuffs to be a part of the boot right here like this thing to be a part of this um i can just go to merge uh, are you screen sharing oh uh, i don't see anything sorry I, I turned it off to watch the other screen share my bad there we go screen share share 
So um, right here, you see, like, say I wanted this this cuff of the boot mm -hmm. to be on the same sub tool as this. Mm -hmm. I can just uh, click this top one. As long as they're like right next to each other in this list, I can just merge down. Boom, bang, right there. So now, oh wow, now they're uh, part of one sub tool in there. And I could do that with the the soles of the shoes as well. Merge down, boom. But yeah, does that work for you? Yeah, that works great. Thank you. Nice. Nice, nice. Hey, Mike, I had a question as well. Yeah, what's up? Uh, so for the bubble sort, I have an outer bulb and then an inner bulb. Should mm. I just make that one thing or should I like try to keep them separate for the potential details? I would keep them separate, yeah. Um, might even be, because you could extract each like petal that forms that outer bulb, you know, from like from that inner bulb. Might be yeah. pretty, pretty efficient that way. <clears throat> So do you use retopology for the entire model or just some parts? Uh, I do every part retopologized in Maya because that's that's what you're supposed to do. You're going to get unclean results otherwise. Um, but seeing as we're short on time, I'm, I'm down for you guys to take some some shortcuts when, when necessary. Um, oh, also, Josh, I was looking at the, oh, OK. Sarah's coming along. Very nice, very nice. OK, wait. Oh, man, there's so many posts in here. Frick. I should have known. But yeah, so for these eyes, I would take these sub tools and push them a little bit into, into the skull and then have the, the eye sort of, uh, the eye socket kind of lead into that. Because Bulbasaur would still have an eye socket, you know, there. Oh, yeah, um, I, I started working on that already. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, but yeah, I, I do like the little, little uh, his little shapes that he's got going on there too. Yes. Definitely, I found a random reptile texture brush kind mm, of thing. Nice. Did you, and you imported it and stuff? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Very nice. I'm looking at some reference material of Bulbasaur and I think his eyes are uh, significantly larger as well on the face. I just re-uploaded a, a newer one, or oh, the one yeah. that I have now. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I'm still thinking it might be a little bit larger. If we look at these source materials, like you see, see how they like they they sit very close to that that central head shape. Yeah, just right on top of the mouth. Yeah. Also, definitely go down in uh, in subdivision levels for uh, for the ears. Like, go down to like level one, and then start start making that ear shape. Always always start from from low when you're doing like big uh, like changes to the to the shape of the character. Okay. Yeah. Got um, it. I'll work on that right now. What else we got? Yeah, yeah. No, this is looking sick though. I like what you got going. I like oh, it. But you see the you see the bulb? Mm -hmm. So there's two different ones. There's one on the inside, one on the outside. Should I do a whole bulb for the inside and then a whole bulb for the outside? Uh like it's the same sort of shape. Yeah. The only thing oh. that happens differently is something kind of at the top where they kind of frill out. I would say just do the outer one and then duplicate them and then uh scale them down and then work from from there. So okay. uh the the duplicate one second, duplicate tool is in here in your sub tool menu so if i duplicate these pants say that this was the uh the bulb you know 
I could uh, scale those up. Oops. Oh, no, but I meant for the retypology. Oh, for the retypology. Um, I would still say duplicate those, yeah. Okay, cool. And then and then maybe mess around with the points at the end if they, but if it's like that big of a difference, then then you'd have to do them separately. But like I I don't think anyone's gonna notice that it's like the same one, you know? Yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you. No problem. Faster. What's up? Um. So I went back to ZBrush and ZRemesh the boat and the clothing and hair, and then I do decimate 
oh, and then there are a lot of triangles in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So instead of decimating those, what you're gonna do is uh, let me let me grab like the uh, the collar of this guy. Uh, you're basically gonna go in and Z remesh. Uh, and you're going to make sure this is this target polygon count is pretty low. Like I'm going to try like, I'm going to try like 0.3. Let's see how this goes for this. Let's see remesh. It's thinking a little bit. Um, it's not doing anything now. Just give it some time. There we go. So I want to decimate the body and screw that I'm doing. Uh, I apologize on um, Maya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so you're 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 trying to decimate the the skirt right now. You said. And the body. Mm -hmm. So just decimate those I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, it decimate those and do those up in Maya. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. look like like now this this collar is like pretty low poly. Now it's it's one thousand five hundred, which is still pretty dense. You could definitely trim that down a bunch if you if you redid it by hand. But you know uh this saves some time but yeah so so what, what you're gonna do for that that like the frilly neck part is you're gonna mm -hmm. go into your z remesher and then do target polygons count and keep that low i would also undo the decimate that you did um to that to that object because we want to give it some nicer higher res geo to look at when it's uh doing its its thing okay so uh, I will retypologize the um, body and screw, and after that, I will import the the other stuff like I see in mesh in Z mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. So you'll basically so so uh, the the body and um, the top and the face. You're going to be doing that quad draw stuff on, and then. Oh the uh the frilly neck part and like little bow you can just z remesh that and then export those and so you'll add that onto your your maya model uh, but the, um the top and the frilly neck thing is same sub tool oh okay yeah yeah so what you can do is go to sub tool mm -hmm. and uh go to split right here and do uh, do split to similar parts. Split to similar part. And then okay. let me know if that splits it up nicely. Did that did that work well for you? Or no. Um, reopening um, ZBrush. Mm, okay. Okay.
that's not a, is that a reference? <laughs> that's that, that's enough reference for me, you know. Who's gonna who's gonna turn this guy down, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was just in the feed of images for Bulbasaur, and I was like, "What is this?" That's the uh, that's the um, that's the one you can use with the uh, biped rig. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, right. There you go. Thinking forward for the class. Yeah. Okay, it works. It works. All right. Thank you. No problem. Keely, are you using an invisible mouse? Is that what's going on there? <laughs> Hand ref. Hand ref, yep. Yep, classic. Finally, I finally cut the interior parts out of the fingers. <laughs> oh, nice. Hell yeah. Kinda. When, when a mesh gets to the point where you can really start like seeing that the quads are very sort of stretched and distorted that's usually when you would say to do a uh dynamesh right i would do a z remesh most likely. okay yeah so i was gonna say i think dynamesh is going to get rid of all the detail i just got in here mm -hmm. i mean z remesh will get rid of some as well but it's gonna follow the form a lot better it's gonna it's gonna look a lot better also it dynamesh might weld your fingers back together if they're too close ah. So do not want that. So do not want, yeah. <laughs> That's the opposite of what I want. Hi, can I get a remesh?
recording. So your hair, if we look in this, the Discord, is right here. So this, this is what we're aiming for. Um, I would definitely, yeah, I would just start with a append sphere. I'm going to alt click on that sphere immediately. I'm going to, uh, let's just, let's just scale this for the time being. There we go. And there we go. So first step is turn on symmetry. And that's X. So now I'm in symmetry mode. And I'm just gonna scale up my my draw size and pull this out, you know. So I just did it in that dimension. And then we can pull out the rest of this. And I'm just smoothing that. Always smooth. And then uh, I'm gonna hit this with the Z remesh, Z remesh half. There you go. And there you go. So it's like you just start with that basic form. Let's look at your reference again. We have it on the see through layer. Okay. So yours goes all the way out here. Like this. And I'm going to Z remesh same, just because we spread out a lot of those polys in there. And then you can start kind of refining the different shapes. I don't know exactly what it looks like from the side, but it looks like there's also like a bandana or a, a headband above, but it also kind of comes be, down. Her hair's supposed to be pulled back like a. Yeah. When it's like a half up down kind of deal. Mm -hmm. So let's like, get... that's what I was that's what I was thinking of changing it because like a uh, the whole half up down part was throwing me off. Half up down. Yeah the uh but I think I think you just get a shape like this and it would read pretty well still. Okay. And then if you just go in with a little bit of uh a little bit of damn standard on this. Let's turn off the polyline so we can really see the shape of it. Yeah. Um, and if we start to mark this up, because you have these sort of uh, if we turn up C three, you have these little 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 creases in the in the hair. So I would go in, start marking that. Uh, I'm going to use not as intense of a damn standard. I always go down to like you know eleven. Maybe even as low as eight sometimes. So we kind of get that. Because, yeah, you, you have that very geometric hair, you know. It'd be, it'd be a shame to, to not model something like that curly and ZBrush, you know. Um, so there we go. And then if you need it to be smoother, which you probably do, or you probably want, then you can always just divide it in your geometry menu. And keep working on it from there. You can even add some extra right here. I don't know what, what's going on behind the character, you know, but oh yeah. So something like that. Uh, this side silhouette could use some work. So I would probably go down to subdivision one and start moving that into position as well. Um, obviously, it would work a lot better without rat ears, you know. So, there we go. <laughs> this rat looks ridiculous with this hairstyle, but you know. That's beautiful. He's rocking it. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so just, just feel free to go in with that move brush and your, your smooth brush to sort of get that get those shapes in there and remember i usually alternate smooth i'm going to preach alternate smooth till the end of time and that's just smoothing and then like getting letting go of shift and still smoothing and uh, if we want more of these sort of 
this like geometric style of it. We can use damn standard, but hold alt so, to sort of push up on that surface right here to get some interesting sort of beveling on that edge, you know? So yeah, I, I feel I feel like ZBrush is a, a good a good way. It's just gonna be a, a matter of getting a, a handle of kind of pushing these shapes around. Um, but yeah, does that make sense to you? Or is that, do you still need a little bit of help? I can always reiterate that makes something. Sense. That makes sense for now. Awesome, yeah. Like if, I, if I have any more troubles, I'll just text through the Discord. Yeah, yeah feel free. That's what, that's what it's there for. That is what it's there for. Man, this, this rat's so gorgeous now. My God. Beautiful. It's got it set up. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Good night. Good luck. I'll see you guys in next class. But yeah, y'all are free to head out too, unless you got questions. Otherwise, I'll be around for be around for like five more minutes.